you need to think bigger. Think about building a successful business that supports you, that replaces your career, that allows you to do what you love to do and make money doing it. YouTube Simplify. This is your first video on creator fundamentals. You may be wondering exactly what those fundamentals are. Well, I recently gave a presentation where I outlined what I consider to be creator fundamentals. Now this video is a little bit longer than the content you'll typically find on creator fundamentals. So make sure you have time and grab yourself a pen and a notebook to take notes. The purpose of this presentation is to significantly shorten your learning curve, getting started on YouTube and learning how to grow. Check it out. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you those those creator fundamentals that I believe are the root of all success on YouTube. So we're going to jump right into the presentation. So the most important thing that we need to understand here is that success is neither magical nor mysterious. Success is the natural consequence of consistently applying the basic fundamentals. That is the core of why I started this channel. That is certainly my belief system that those who rise above the rest are doing so based on doing those fundamentals the right way over time, over a long period of time and consistently. That's what we're gonna jump into today. I'm going to explain to you what those fundamentals are and how they apply to your efforts to grow a brand and build a business here on YouTube. But first, I wanna talk about why this is important to me. I think one of the reasons or one of the things that people often overlook when they're trying to create something on YouTube is why. Why are you trying to create a YouTube channel? If your best answer is, hey, I'm just trying to do this for money, then you're probably going to run into quite a few roadblocks uh, in terms of everything from productivity to uh, just pure motivation. That's really going to cause you some problems uh, out there uh, if money is your sole purpose. For me, why it's important to me, uh, I decided from a very early age that quality of life matters. Uh, that picture that you see there on the screen, that's actually my father. I'm there on the left and my brother uh, saying goodbye to my dad as he went out to sea. Now, I have nothing but respect for all of the personnel in our armed forces, but I remember as a kid on multiple occasions where my dad would leave for six months uh, out on the aircraft carrier that he was stationed on at the time. And uh, sometime very early on, I decided that uh, that was not something that I was going to do. I was not going to be away for a prolonged period of time uh, when I finally had a family. And the type of jobs that I, that I chose to go after in my career also varied based on these core concepts. Uh, over time, I was able to develop that feeling that I had into what I call personal freedom. It's the idea of living life on your own terms uh, to do uh, the things that make you happy while also building a career uh, around those things. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to create an environment or build your own business, you don't want to create that same crappy job that you're trying to get away from. Uh, you know, maybe you have a good job. Maybe you have that boss who's like a micromanager or whatever it is that you would improve about your current situation. That's exactly what you want to focus on when you're building, when you're architecting the, uh, future around you, what you do, how you make money and the life that you're going to live. So I think it's really important that you think about why uh, this whole thing is important to you and how you can influence uh, what it is that you're doing based on that importance. Understanding your why goes a long way in helping you guide your path, answer questions, uh, overcome hurdles, all the things that you need to do as you move forward. Now, see, the thing about YouTube is it's not complicated. It's just hard and people want easy. Now, the execution of it is not necessarily hard. The longevity of it is ultimately what becomes hard. And we're going to talk about that, how to approach it, how not to let the whole big picture kind of overwhelm you, because that is typically one of the big reasons why people fail on YouTube and building a brand through online video. The really important thing that you need to focus on is that there is a way to approach it without overwhelming yourself. Uh, I always fall back on this. How does a mouse eat an elephant? 
Uh, obviously, you can see the tiny mouse and the massive elephant, which represents just this huge obstacle of building and growing a brand that not only makes money, but supports you and every and the people around you. Uh, and the answer is one bite at a time. We don't look at that. It's good to have big picture, long term goals, but we don't try to take all of that in at once. It's all about breaking things down into smaller pieces, kind of compartmentalizing the different tasks that need to be done, and then focusing on that single bite at a time is what's going to lead you down the path of success. So the plan for success. Uh, what you really need to do is to plan for success. When you're first starting out, it's easy to fall into that habit of talking about how, oh, YouTube is a, uh, a hobby or, you know, I'm just doing it. A lot of people do that because they have a lack of confidence. They don't have any experience in it. They don't really understand what it actually takes to be successful. And it's kind of a defense mechanism. Oh, I'm not really taking this seriously because I don't want to fail. Uh, I say that you approach this as if you are you are going to be successful. You're going to have a massive channel uh, that brings in money that you're able to go full time on YouTube with and all of those things. Now, to that end, it's important to consider some of the things that will become important to you farther down the road. Now, your ability to do that in the beginning is going to help you to not run into stumbling blocks along the way. Now, when I say plan for success, it has a lot to do with thinking about your brand. As I've mentioned here on the uh, slide, the name that you choose on YouTube is important. Now, it's not the be all end all. It's not going to uh, identify success or failure just in the name, but these are just things that you think about one time, you get them all done out, get them in front of you uh, and get them taken care of. And as I've listed here, a bunch of things, the name that you choose on YouTube, the social media handles across other social media platforms, even if you don't plan on posting content on those, now is a good time to kind of look at all of those things at once. You know, say you want to do, um, you know, how to fix bicycles uh, and your name is Dave and you do Dave's bicycle fixes or Dave's bicycle repairs. The first thing you want to do is say, okay, is there another Dave out there who is fixing bicycles? And are we going to conflict with the brand that we've chosen? So perhaps we go, uh, you know, Dave's bicycle repair, and then we go to check out, hey, is there anybody on YouTube have that name and are they using it? If they do have that name, are they successful in terms of being consistent and regularly posting content? Because you can, at the end of the day, if you're going to be somebody who's consistent and you do see the name out there uh, from somebody who hasn't posted a video in a year, it probably won't take too much effort for you to surpass them and be the result that comes up when somebody searches for Dave's bicycle repair. Uh, same thing with social media handles. You want to make sure that that whatever name that you choose is available on those different social media platforms. Uh, and you can do that right from the beginning and it can help you kind of guide your name. So all of your branding across all the different social me media platforms is consistent. You know, maybe uh, if you go with Dave's Bicycle Repair, you want to see that that's available on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook uh, and all of the places where you could potentially help market or promote your YouTube content uh, in the future. Domain is the same thing. Domain is actually something that can kind of help you make little tweaks uh, to that actual branding because uh, it's very easy to see whether that exists or not. Uh, and it uh, is something that ultimately kind of presents your own social media platform uh, per se with the idea that you can control what type of content that you put on your own website and you're not uh, governed by the rules of the different social media platforms. So uh, there was a time when I was wondering if domains would go away and uh, people would just live on social media platforms. But the more that you interact in this environment, the more you realize you are at the mercy of changes of terms of service on different platforms. So it is good to have your own entity to get that domain name. Even if you don't build a website right away, Register your domain that matches your branding that allows you to uh, keep that in place. And the reason I tell you to do all this in the beginning, because what I see a lot of times happen, somebody will go on one platform, they'll become successful, and then uh, 
they have this big audience and they're like, oh, I got need to get on social media. I need to get on Twitter and Instagram. And then they go to look for their um, branding to get a name that matches their branding. It's not available anymore. So then you see people who uh, uh, either use the one they made when they were like 12 years old uh, or they come up with some other name or they just use the one that they had and their the branding is all mismatched. You have like four different social media platforms and every single one of those names uh, has nothing to do with each other and it just kind of causes confusion uh, and it uh, makes it a little bit more difficult for people to find you. If you're Dave's Bicycle Repair and somebody can just know Dave's Bicycle Repair regardless of what your um, actual handle is on that social media platform, they can still go and just search for Dave's Bicycle Repair and they're probably going to find you that way. Also, it's never too early for monetization. Now, I mentioned earlier we are not talking about focusing on money as our driving force, but you can still plan ahead for it. Uh, and I think that that's important that uh, what often happens to people in that hobby mode is they they kind of uh, they kind of build this anti, monetization mindset where they they're like oh well you don't care about your audience if you're trying to monetize it nonsense that has the two of them have nothing to do with each other the idea is and if you wanted to make an argument for them having to do something uh, with each other it would actually be the exact opposite i want to monetize my content because i need to be able to support the creation of my content and the improvement over time of my content and that costs time and money so if i want to continue to reach you as my audience and give you higher quality content as we move forward and reach more people then i absolutely need to think about monetizing my content to be able to have that ability uh, especially now in this day and age uh, where people can't necessarily go out and do the things they want to do in the real world and make the money that they want to make. Having a plan in place to be able to monetize and make money through your online content is super powerful. And it's going to allow you to uh, continue to expand your ability to reach more people around the globe. In fact, this presentation is being recorded on a camera that was paid for by YouTube monetization. This microphone that I'm speaking into was paid for by YouTube monetization. All of these things go into helping you up your quality, up your uh, game here on YouTube in terms of the value that you can present to people and it absolutely makes sense to lay the groundwork for monetization in the beginning. That means uh, uh, just understanding what it takes. Maybe you create an AdSense account uh, and you link it to your, your uh, Google account or your YouTube account, and then uh, it will just be there. So once you do meet the requirements, it will uh, allow you to get in the mix on that. All right, so it's important to realize that it's not about the money. I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, but you cannot focus on the money. You need to figure out a topic that you enjoy making content about, that's step number one, and you need to focus on the content and delivering value to your audience more so than how you can extract money from your audience. If you continue to deliver that value and you grow your audience, the money side is going to take, uh, uh, you know, do everything that it needs to do all by itself. You just need to plan for it, but the goal is not to focus on it. Your next video is not how can I make more money, it's how can I deliver value to my audience, build a reputation as the go-to person in this particular top or topic or niche, and then the idea of monetizing will come into play later on down the road. Biggest problem on YouTube, why so many people fail, is their inability to be consistent. Consistency comes in many forms. It comes in the type of content that you're focused on, how often you're posting, what you're posting, and what people can expect from you. You need to build the habit of content creation. That is where people often flounder in trying to get the ball rolling here on YouTube. You need to get in the habit of having a process in place for how you make videos. Now, to this end, uh, it's important that you streamline some of that process. A lot of people uh, head into YouTube and they're like, oh, I'll make a video, I don't know what it is, I'll pick up my cam, my phone, which is perfectly acceptable for making content here on YouTube. 
But as you move forward, you really want to get the process streamlined so there's consistency in your delivery and your presentation and all of that. As I mentioned, you want to find a niche. You want to focus on a topic. That is the quickest way to grow here on YouTube, to be able to let YouTube know exactly what to expect from your channel. Just as important as making sure your audience knows what to expect from you, YouTube and the algorithm are trying to decide uh, which audience your videos are a good fit for. Remember, YouTube is not trying to find people to watch your videos. They're trying to find videos to deliver to people who want to watch videos. The more they understand what it is that you are creating in terms of those videos and what topic that you're covering, the more they can match you to a viewer profile that uh, is in line with your content type. So it's really important uh, that you are focused. Uh, now, as you continue to develop and you grow, there are some opportunities to kind of branch out, see what works and and uh, play along the fringes of your niche to uh, kind of expand your offering. But I do think that focusing on the niche is a good way to go. And be reliable. Now that has to do with the frequency with which you are posting content. Uh, and that's also a really big part of being consistent on YouTube. You can't post a video uh, once a week and then take two months off. What you really need to do is figure out a schedule that actually works for you. A lot of people, they get their gung-ho, they come onto YouTube, they're like, oh, I'm gonna give it 150%, and then they do a video a day for like 30 days, and then they're completely burned out, and they walk away from YouTube. You need to find a um, schedule that meets or that aligns with your real-world life. There's a lot that goes on for all of us around uh, outside of YouTube, and it's important to give consideration to that when we're actually trying to figure out what's possible, what we're able to stick to, how we're able to provide uh, value to our audience on a consistent basis. The number one metric, a lot of people like to go in and focus on the metrics and analyze and try to determine whether the algorithm likes them or hates them. And depending on the day, uh, they may be absolutely convinced that it's both things. One of the ways that you avoid that is, uh, you know, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. The only thing that you should be focused on in the beginning is that number one metric and that is video count. That doesn't mean pop out a bunch of crappy videos. That means don't focus on how many views each video is getting. Don't focus on how many subscribers you have on your channel because for most, in most cases, that number means nothing. Focus on making a hundred videos. That should be your starting point. That should be the only metric that you are paying attention to until you get through a hundred videos. While you're making those 100 videos, if you strive to improve a little bit each time, you will be absolutely amazed at how far you can grow your brand and your channel here on YouTube. So you upload a video, you look at that video after the fact, you review it, identify something in that video where you can improve upon, whether it's your lighting or maybe your camera was shaking, maybe your audio wasn't the best, pick out a little thing each time, Strive to improve that a little bit for your next video. Do that for 100 videos and you will make a world of progress here on the platform. As I mentioned before, how does a mouse eat an elephant? Uh, it is one bite at a time. It's step by step. It's understanding that you need to move forward in order to get closer to success. Anything you do that creates doubt or prevents you from actually uploading your video is going to cause you uh, to slow down in terms of progress. As I mentioned, upload your video. Perfect is the enemy of good. Don't sit there and tell yourself that your video is not good enough. Everybody's first videos suck. Um, I think Roberto Blake refers to it as make 100 crappy videos. Uh, I'm very much in line with the 100 video concept of making small improvements with each of those videos. So maybe your 100th video will still suck, but it will be 100 times better than that first video. And you can't get to that 100 videos until you upload the first one. Don't expect it to be perfect. It will not be perfect. Even when you think you have it figured out, there are still ways to improve your content on YouTube, and you will be amazed at how much uh, you can improve upon. When I 
posted the very first video on Creator Fundamentals, uh, I thought it was pretty decent. I look back at it now and I'm pretty horrified at <laughs> just how not perfect it is. I was yelling at the camera. I was using cheesy uh, green screen background with poor lighting. It was just a mess. And then you focus on those small improvements over time. And before you know it, you've made massive progress uh, and it just kind of works its way through. It's not like you have to have some big epiphany on how to be an expert video maker. You just keep stacking up those improvements and it will get you to where you want to go. Now, it's really important to be engaged. You can't just use YouTube as a place to throw videos and let people shower you with attention. Engage with your audience. Be interactive with your audience as much as possible. You should be, especially in the beginning, responding to every single comment that gets left on your videos. Maybe your early videos are getting 10 views and three comments. Make sure that you are responding to every one of those three comments. They've taken time out of their day to dedicate to watching your content, and it's important that you recognize that. That's how you build community around your channel, and that allows you to grow that audience. It allows people to get to know you a little bit better, and it gives you the um, the momentum in the right direction of growing a community. People will say, oh yeah, I watched so-and-so's video. They'll remember that you responded to them and they may suggest you or recommend you to one of their friends depending on the topic that you're covering. We all want everything to happen right now. Um, and I actually saw there was a recent conversation about this um, I think it was on uh, Two Buddies 24 hour live stream where they likened it to uh, weight loss and the idea that um, you don't expect your diet to work overnight. But uh, be patient. This is a process that you have to build unless you came into YouTube with just a massive level of expertise in videography and production and set design and all this stuff. There's going to be a learning curve. So. Work on making those small improvements. Do some research. Do some uh, studying of what other people have done. Watch tutorials and uh, temper your expectations. It's going to take a while. That's why I say focus on those 100 videos. It's going to take you a while to get through those 100 videos. You're going to learn along the way. And you can't be expecting to post three videos and then look at your analytics and be a superstar YouTuber does not work that way. It takes work. It takes consistency. It takes time to build awareness out there in the community of who you are, what you do, and why people should care. Patience also comes along with focusing on what you can control. Again, you can control how many videos you upload. You cannot control how many people subscribe to your channels. You cannot control how many people watch your videos. You cannot control how many people YouTube shows your videos to. There's some ways to enhance your probability of getting exposed to more people. But at the end of the day, it's YouTube's automated systems that are going to make that call. Marathon Mindset long-term goals, short-term action. You can control what you are doing in the short term and have that long-term goal of growing a successful YouTube channel. If you are in the present and you're trying to have immediate success in this week or this month, it just clouds what you should be doing. You should be focused on the action and having that long-term goal out there as that carrot that you're heading towards. But don't expect that to show up tomorrow. Continue to be consistent over time, employ patience, and continue to focus on what you can control. Authenticity matters for a number of different reasons. For one thing, you can tell when somebody's fake. Uh, it, and if uh, you're watching a video and you're like, yeah, this is garbage, or you're watching reality TV, for example, and you can tell that it's blatantly acted out, it just changes your entire perception of that content. You're probably not going to watch it unless you're watching it like a soap opera or a train wreck or whatever it is. Uh, authenticity matters because people can usually sniff it out. The flip side of authenticity is if people don't notice, but people come to expect that certain 
uh, false persona that you presented to them. And we've seen this in the big YouTube world with YouTubers who had millions of subscribers who basically felt the need to conform to what they thought their audience wanted, which was a completely fake version of themselves. Uh, it just causes so many problems and it causes, uh, you know, stress and the uh, lack of desire to keep moving forward and make content because you're constantly putting out content uh, that's not true to who you are and what you care about and what's important to you. So authenticity definitely matters, perhaps not in the case of candy hearts versus real hearts, but uh, be yourself. If people are going to fall in love with your content and the person that you are, make sure it's the real person that you are and not somebody you thought they might want to see because that's just going to be hard to hold up. It's not going to be pleasant for you in the long term. And you'll be surprised. That is the one unique thing that nobody else can provide on a YouTube channel is you. You have the ability to leverage the fact that you're different from everybody else to make that the focal point of why people should care about what you're doing. Relationships are powerful in many, many ways. You, from the other content creators that you've built relationships with through either attending conferences online or in person eventually, um, relationships go a really long way in helping provide opportunities, uh, education, uh, just a better understanding of the uh, environment around you, like what works, what doesn't work. Uh, you know, maybe you meet one person who knows somebody else and they allow you to meet each other, which leads to a collaboration. It's also very helpful on the sponsor side companies. If you're using products or services out there, don't be afraid to include them in your content. Even if you haven't grown to a point where you uh, are in a position to try to get a brand deal. If you can show value and let those companies know that you value their products as you continue to grow, you are now uh, developing a relationship with them ahead of time. So when it does come time, when you have built a substantial audience, then you have that natural relationship as an opportunity for a potential sponsorship or brand deal or just different ways you can work together to help promote that business and also help you grow as a brand and audience on your YouTube. You never know where those relationships are going to go. This picture was taken at Vid Summit, I think in 2017. I had just landed, uh, got into my hotel, checked in for Vid Summit, and then I come back down and all the people that I watched on YouTube were hanging out uh, in the bar area down in the hotel that we were at. A half hour later, I'm at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in Los Angeles having dinner with Brian G. Johnson and Nick Nimmin and Roberto Blake and all of these great creators. And fast forward to 2020, all of those people agreed through the relationships that we developed over the past few years to speak at my conference people of video. You're going to see their presentations uh, throughout this two-day event, and that all started on this day uh, in be being able to start those relationships, build those relationships, uh, just because we had something in common, which is ed educating other YouTubers and content creators and uh, um, being part of the community as a whole. When you're authentic, when you're part of the community, when you form relationships with other people, they can lead to, maybe it just leads to chicken and waffles with uh, some people you were watching on YouTube. Not a bad thing, even if that's as far as it goes. But uh, you continue to develop those relationships, and one day you could be hosting your own conference, and who knows who will be there speaking at yours. So you really need to understand that you're planting seeds. Uh, I, I definitely like to look at this entire process as going out and planting seeds. Uh, you know, maybe it's a relationship seed or maybe it's an awareness seed where you're basically making people aware of your content or, you know, you talk to one person who talks to another person who talks to another person and they're like, oh, yeah, I know so and so makes a channel about this. You should check it out. Like, oh, no kidding. I make a product that does X, Y, Z. That's good for that audience. The more you make a conscious effort to build relationships, the more opportunities unfold. Sometimes they don't unfold for a couple of years, but they are out there. They do exist. And the more you're out there uh, forming, starting those relationships, planting those seeds, 
the more of them will grow and become fruitful for you and the content that you're creating here on the platform. I mentioned this a little bit before, but you need to think bigger. Think about building a successful business that supports you, that replaces your career, that allows you to do what you love to do and make money doing it. Long-term goals, short-term actions. That is the key to success. You need to have your eyes on the prize. You need to know specifically what it is you're going after. You need to develop a plan, kind of reverse engineer back to what you should be doing today, and then focus on those actions that you've identified. Maybe that those actions are simply coming up with video ideas, recording your videos, editing your videos, getting your videos out once a week or twice a week or once every two weeks, depending on what schedule you've identified, and then execute on those actions. But do so with that long-term goal in mind that you are going to be successful, that you are going to build a brand, that you can create channels that are big, uh, as big or bigger than those YouTubers that you watch from afar on YouTube. It's definitely within your range. It is not something that people are born with. Some of the most successful YouTubers uh, did not become that way because they were born a YouTuber. Most of them were born when YouTube didn't exist. They just continued to improve their craft, to focus on it, to give their audiences what the audience was looking for and make improvements over time. It took Mr. Beast quite a few years before his channel really caught on and developed the audience to where it is today when he could walk around and just hand out cash. Must be a beautiful thing, right? You have that ability. You just need to be consistent in doing so. Now, we talked about this a little bit, but persistence, persistence, that will to keep moving forward. All of the slides that I showed you up until this one are all about being able to be persistent because if you focus on the wrong things, it adds a completely higher level of stress and dissatisfaction and frustration to the process. That's why I've showed you this. That's why authenticity is important and being patient is important and focusing on that number one metric of a hundred videos instead of focusing on the things that you cannot control. If you do all the things that I've told you about up until this, persistence is going to be much easier to achieve because persistence is definitely a deal breaker in terms of people who give up on it, who don't continue moving forward. You don't want to quit before the magic happens. You need to keep doing what you're doing, believe in your long-term goal, execute on your short-term actions, and that will take care of the persistence component of Creator Fundamentals. Success, and I'll leave you with this as we close out, and I truly believe this, is not measured by your high points. Success is measured by how you respond to your low points. There are going to be ups and downs on YouTube. Nobody is at the peak of their attention on YouTube and goes, hey, let's give up. That's not usually how it happens. What usually happens is you experience some type of high. You see the peak. You see what's possible. You get really excited about that. And maybe it lasts for a week, a month, or six months. But ultimately, on the other side of that, there's usually a drop. And it's people who hit that drop who think that they've suddenly failed and that whatever was working is not going to work anymore. And then they walk away. Those are the people who don't find success because they're not able to handle those low points as much as they're able to enjoy the high points. And it's the action that you take and the mindset that you have when you reach those low points. And I saw it, my brother has a YouTube channel called This Life Outdoors that had amazing uh, uh, start out of the gate and he jumped up to 10,000 subscribers and was getting more videos than I've ever, or more video views per day than I've ever seen on Creator Fundamentals here in you know, the third year. And uh, I told him, I'm like, this is awesome. Enjoy it, but you need to be prepared for what's going to happen on the backside. And that is always what gets people down. I talk with other YouTubers out there and I'll get the messages about, oh man, YouTube hates me or YouTube's drunk or whatever the case is because they're, they're, their views dried up. They're not getting what they expect to get. And those are the times that you really need to go all in, to focus on what you're doing, to be consistent. It's not about running faster. It's not about, definitely not about quitting. It's just continuing to be consistent no matter what uh, is going on, especially when you're seeing those low points. So 
I hope this has all been helpful to you. I hope it gives you a much better idea of what it takes to be successful on YouTube. Like I said, these aren't just magicians or people with a magic wand who are able to find success on YouTube. It's those people who uh, use consistency, who are genuine and authentic and they build relationships and they respond to their audience and they do all these things over and over again. Uh, and then they become big YouTube stars and then the viewers go, oh, I want to be an overnight success like Mr. Beast. Well, Mr. Beast has been doing this for 10 years. So it's important for you to implement these, to do all the things that the little things that you need to do. Like I said, on many of these slides, little things, big results. Uh, it's not complicated. You just need to uh, get in there and do it. To continue on this theme, if you want to schedule time with me, contact dan.com. And as always, if you have any questions or anything, you can email me at askdan at Creator Fundamentals. And hey, don't forget the content here on Creator Fundamentals is sponsored by TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is your number one browser plugin for managing and growing your YouTube channel. It's available to download for free. There's a link in the description below, or you can go to trytubebuddy.today and get started for free. And hey, don't let the learning stop here. Check out this playlist of YouTube feature tutorials that will help you simplify YouTube. I'll see you in the next video.